I've always been impressed by the incredible imagery found in video games. Those incredible backdrops that tell a story beyond the gameplay, beyond the playable area, the distance places that we wish to go to and hope that the developers will allow us to explore those areas at some point. That's what really interests me. Now, I've always been uh, curious how these amazing backgrounds are made. So I spent countless hours researching and making my own iterations of it. Successfully, I've managed to create amazing vistas, nebulas and other cosmic events using skyboxes in Unreal Engine and in Blender. Um, I, most of these are available on Patreon, on my YouTube membership and on our station in Gumroad. In today's video, we will explore my current workflow to create the incredible imagery that you can use on your own projects that will make them truly unique. Think of skyboxes more than just a static image in the background. Artists use this to create skies, space environments, but also for creating distant detail objects that are effectively just 2D uh, textures on a plain mesh. The more accomplished implementations of these also include animations um, that just give the, the, you know, further enhance the visuals and trick the viewer into believing that the environment is actually three-dimensional. For all of those that are interested in making uh, passive income with this method, uh, please have a look at my tutorial, how I use Midjourney and Unreal Engine to make a passive income. It's directly linked to this particular tutorial. And if you watch this and the other one, you will be able to monetize some of this content yourself. All you need to do is just follow those steps and understand how to go about it. If you have any questions, consider joining the Discord server and you can ask me in there directly, um, you know, anything that you'd need to know. This is the particular workflow that I use in this particular order. So I use Midjourney AI to generate the imagery based on image prompts, Gigapixel to upscale the generated imagery for more crisp detail, and then Photoshop for stitching and blending these textures, either in a skybox texture that wraps around the environment or get them ready to be used on flat planes within the environment. If you want to add and control fantastic skyboxes in Unreal Engine, then you need to watch my previous tutorial. The link is in the description below. We go through how to set it up, how to use it, and also how to animate them. Alternatively, you can use Blender to generate interesting imagery, such as creating clouds or nebulas out of volumes. You can see this in my Nebula Generator projects for Blender. You can also watch my beginner-friendly tutorial on how to create uh, your own beautiful uh, nebulas and your own Nebula Generator in Blender. The link is in the description. Now, for upscaling, you can use Photoshop itself as it does come with an upscale function, although not nearly as good as Gigapixel. Or you can try an online service uh, or GIMP. None of these methods are as good as Gigapixel though, so I advise you to test it out, maybe use a trial version on their website, and just do some comparisons and just make up your own mind. Now, for ste texture stitching and editing, your best option is Photoshop, followed by Sketchbook, which is a free app, uh, and also you can use GIMP, but I'm not so sure about GIMP itself. I know Sketchbook can do what, what Photoshop can achieve. All of the, you know, the others, the, the GIMP and the sketchbook, uh, sketchbook option are fine and they are free, uh, but I would definitely, you know, as I said, use Photoshop or Sketchbook. In this particular tutorial, I am using Photoshop. For the full length tutorial where I uh, hold your hand throughout the entire process, please consider joining my YouTube membership or Patreon where you can get access to a lot more in-depth uh, video footage and also uh, to all of my projects. But if you are confident in your skill, keep watching this particular tutorial and will still achieve the same result. For our intended purposes, I will be creating a skybox texture at 16K, which will wrap around our scene. The logic behind my approach is to get the small, get small resolution textures, around 2 to 3K resolution in size, upscale them in Gigapixel and stitch them together or blend them together in Photoshop. Midjourney is a fantastic tool to generate endless imagery using uh, text-based prompts. Also, have a look at DALI or Stable Diffusion, and I'm sure there's some, you know, there'll be others to use. But in Midjourney, I normally generate images with a topic that interests me. In this case, I'm looking for a prompt that will generate nebulas and a star nursery in H.R. Geiger's style. This is why Midjourney is so powerful and so beautiful to use, that you can get something like this just using text.
Image Journey generates uh, images at roughly 2 to 3K resolution in the most upscale version of your prompt. These are uh, forever saved on your profile, so you can always go back and create more variations of them. I will keep generating more variants of the same prompt so that I have a, a few textures like a set to upscale and work with. Uh, my next step is to bring the textures in Gigapixel and start upscaling. The settings that work best for me has been six times the size of the original image with the compressed methods of the algorithm to be used. Uh, noise reduction and blur reduction are settings to play with uh, from a case-by-case -case scenario. Um, in Photoshop, I will create a blank project at 16K with a white background. This will be important later on. Once my textures are ready, I proceed to import them in Photoshop as smart objects. The advantage of smart objects is that no matter if I scale them up or down, they will retain their original resolution. If you start painting on them or erasing them directly, they will no longer be smart objects and will lose their quality if scaled. Instead, we will use the mask uh, on each texture so that we can paint with a soft brush where we want the mask to uh, erase or bring the texture back in. So this is done with a black color for um, you know, um, erasing and a white color to bring the pixels back in. Having a white background helps to detect any edges of your textures that need to be erased. Later on, we can add a uh, black background, for example, if we need that in a space scene. Uh, you may want to add a bluish background if you're making a sky, as an example. Now, the black background can also be used as an alpha of sorts if you want to have other layers of other textures show up behind in your foreground, midground, and background. Based on your intended purpose, make sure you populate your uh, HDRI texture with as much detail as possible. Now, also, you want to reduce the texture scale of every one of your generated textures to a point where the original resolution, even if it's upscaled, it doesn't create any visible artifacting or pixelated looking uh, effect. Uh, think of the skybox as a texture wrapping around a sphere, which effectively that's what it is. So with that in mind, your elements should be placed uh, with, with the center of the, the sphere in mind. So anything below the center point is below, is on the um, second half of the sphere, on the bottom of it, and anything above the center point is gonna be above. So if, uh, effectively that could be the point where all the clouds are, as an example. Um, another tip here is to try and stay away from the edges of your texture. So that's the top, the bottom, the sides, uh, in order to get a proper seamless detail. Uh, now, a, you, you need to have a seamless transition if you want that. The poles of the sphere are the worst in this scenario. Think of a solid color like black being the perfect blend transition between each side, so then you have no um, issues with any, any sort of visible scenes. Once you are happy with the work you've done, it's time to export um, the texture as an image out of Photoshop. For my Unreal Engine setup, you are going to need cube maps, also known as HDRI textures, which are used in conjunction with a camera vector setup so that the skybox is wrapping around my entire world in the project. If you want to export HDRIs out of Photoshop, you will need to convert your project from an 8-bit project to a 32-bit project. This will then allow you to export as HDRI. Alternatively, you can export um, an HDRI out of Blender. Now, this is useful if you're not using paid software such as Photoshop. In Blender, bring your saved PNG or whatever other format from Photoshop, GIMP, or Sketchbook. Change uh, your render to cycles with a sample of one and no denoise. Enable the add-on, import images as planes, and import your texture inside of Blender as a plane. In order to see the texture displaying, you will need to edit the material of the imported texture plane and hook the image texture color directly into the surface of your material output. Make your world material into a solid black and add a camera facing directly at the added texture plane. Adjust your aspect ratio and resolution to render at 16K if that is the resolution that you're aiming for. 
Uh, and the render will take only a couple of uh, seconds and you can now choose what format to export your image as. Now using this texture in Blender is quite easy. All you need to do is bring uh, the texture in as an equirectangular texture in your world shader material. Uh, link it to the color of your background and play around with the strength. Alternatively, a star field can be generated and stitched together in Blender by adding a noise texture, a color ramp, and then mixing the, between the skybox and the color ramp. Uh, use my noise texture setup to control how this looks. For Unreal Engine, you need to import the texture and make sure to double click and increase its resolution by changing the mid gen settings from uh, it's actually called from texture group change that to no mip maps this will ensure that the texture is displayed at the maximum um, at the highest setting possible highest resolution but it will also have no compression which then means that it will eat more video memory with my project setup i covered this in my skybox tutorial for unreal engine you will need to use an hdri texture for that one but follow that tutorial and you'll be fine Alternatively, you can import the texture as a PNG and you can create a material out of that texture. This basic setup in Unreal Engine will, allow, uh, will not allow for stars to be presented in the, sea, in, the, uh, in the scene, sorry, unless you follow my more in-depth tutorial on how to achieve these results. The link is in the description. And there you have it, a skybox created with AI, stitched together in Photoshop and added to your favorite projects. There are other ways to do this as well, and I covered this more in depth in the uh, tutorial and the full length tutorial on Patreon and the YouTube membership. Uh, follow my other tutorials for more uh, tricks and how to get this achieve, how to achieve all of these effects. I would like to really extend my gratitude to the Patreons and YouTube members for um, supporting me and for buying me many, many coffees. If you guys would like access to my projects, have a look on our station Gumroad. Patreon membership, membership, YouTube membership, it only costs about a coffee. So for the price of a coffee, you can get the, all of these projects. So I hope to see you guys in the next tutorial. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, please leave a like, comment and subscribe. And uh, yeah, you know, Organian's puzzle box. Hey, getting a bit bigger now. <laughs>